Hey there, I'm Ken. This is CRT. Welcome. Welcome to this episode where I am going to continue looking at the keyboard for my TRS-80 Model 100 computer. Now, um, I had said in the previous episode that I was going to start taking the key switches apart and uh, clean them and see if that was going to help. But upon closer inspection of things, I discovered a few other parts I want to look at first. And after having read the comments on the other episodes, which by the way, if you haven't seen those episodes yet, I'll put a link to the first one up here. Now, uh, um, a suggestion had been made by some people that I should take a closer look at the traces on the circuit board to make sure that they're all working properly. So, um, yeah, I'm going to start with those because they're easier than taking those switches apart. So, uh, yeah, nothing else to do, but, uh, yeah, let's get started. So I've got my new keycap puller, which is going to make taking all of these keycaps off much easier. So let's get started. There we go. We have all of the keys off, so now we can see what is under this felt protective part. See how easy this comes off. And of course it seems to be glued down. So we'll take that off very carefully. And this is coming off slowly. Now, one of the things I wanted to check is that there seems to be little diodes or capacitors or something under here. I'll have to take a closer look at them. I think they're diodes though. And it's possible that that could be what's preventing these particular keys from working. So I'll have to take a look at that. But you can see on top of each one of the keys there is a little piece of equipment there that I think is a diode. I'll have to look and see if I can find some schematics or something for this. Is that also might be the problem on why there's only ones here and there not working. Okay, so I have gone through and I have tested from the back side here each and every one of those diodes and they seem to be working fine. However, looking at the board nice and closely, it looks like upon the suggestion in the uh, last video that I should look at the traces to make sure there's no breaks in here. But looking them over very carefully and I see a couple of problems where there might or spots where there might be problems. So time to get out the IPA and a toothbrush, give it a good cleaning and see what I can see. So there are some spots on the board like uh, right there in between the number 15 that uh, look a little suspect to me. Um, Right above the 52 there, that also looks a little suspect to me. There's a couple other spots, so I'm going to test the continuity in those areas and, uh, yeah, see what's going on. So maybe I might not even have to take this all apart. We'll see. Okay, so one of the potential problem spots that I found is, uh, so I showed you before, right here in between the 15, so, if I test it from here, I follow that down to here, we're getting nothing. Now, I also wanted to test the line right beside it, which is this one right here, which then comes down to there. And we are getting a signal there. So it's just this one line doesn't seem to be working. 
and the other spot is here right here so that goes from here to here and we're getting nothing now we're going to make some jumper wires use the wires that I have right here uh, cut these down to size tin the ends and get ready to attach them to the board and hopefully that will work and then I won't have to take all of those uh, key switches off and take them apart and clean them um, if uh, this does work I'll just spray a little deoxidant into each of the uh, key switches while I've got the key caps off and I'll give the key caps a washing but let's try this and see if it's gonna work I just have to quickly put this back together turn it back on okay and let's adjust this contrast so that you can see it on the camera Okay, we're in basic. Oh, let's see. Tab works. Q and W work. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six work. Nine, ten, zero. It appears as if all of the keys are working. All right, well, that was the problem. There was just a couple of little breaks in the uh, circuit board there that I just had to put a little couple of bodge wires in and now uh, it is working. So it is time to give the keys a wash. Um, throw a little contact cleaner into all of these uh, um, key switches here and then put it back together. Closing this up, I noticed something as I was about to put the piece on the bottom here. I noticed a spot in there that I hadn't noticed before. So I did some testing and I've discovered three more traces here that are not working. So I tested out the keyboard and there are some keys at the bottom of the keyboard here that are not working. So I guess I've got to put a couple more jumper wires in there. And, uh, yeah, well, three more, I guess. So, time to get started at that. Okay, I have added, hopefully, the last jumper wire I have to add. Turn it on. It still works. In the basic we go. Those top numbers are working. And the bottom letters are working. And number lock.
everything seems to be working. There we go, a fully operational TRS-80 Model 100 portable computer. So this Model 100 is finally completely working and I'm so very happy about it. I guess now all I need to do is uh, find a computer that's got an RS-232 port so I can download some programs onto it and save them on the cassette. But that's something I'll probably do at a later date. For now, I'm just happy to have this little piece of history working completely. It's, uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, something that's worth having and worth keeping running because it is really a piece of history that, um, yeah, you didn't have a lot of portable computers like this back at the time. So I'm happy to have it. And I'm happy that it was only putting those jumper cables on um, rather than having to take all the key switches off. Even though the uh, soldering job I did wasn't that great, it was effective, it wasn't pretty, but effective. Um, and every time I'm doing something like this, my soldering skills are getting better and better. Um, this is the soldering unit I'm using here. It's a uh, combination of uh, hot air gun and soldering and definitely worth having something like this just for the fact that it heats up so much faster than those cheap ones like I used to use that you just plug straight into the wall. I'll put a link down if you're interested in something like this. Just to, you know, if you're looking for something, I like it. I haven't had any problems with it. I've had it for about six months now. I think it's a pretty good unit. Anyway, enough of the sales pitch. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, video. If you did, you know what you can do with the liking, subscribing, and commenting below because anything and everything you do is always greatly appreciated. But now I think it is time that I, um, hmm, what should I do? I think I deserve to play some video games. So I'm going to go play games. See you next time.